really quick if any of you ever thought about becoming a patron um now is definitely the time not only do you get involved in monthly giveaways but you can get a discount right now if you buy or if you pay for a year's worth you get 10 percent off and then you know maybe you have the money now and you might not in the future and you don't want money coming out of your account every month you can do pay for it all in one lump sum for an entire year that way you are involved in monthly giveaways for the next year so and i also want to thank all the patrons that we already have i love you you guys thank you guys for making this channel possible let's get to the video bang needs knives i'm jared my lovely wife kara is busy and in this video we are going to talk about real hard use knives and what they got right and also what they got wrong so let's talk about it so this is the rat one this to me isn't necessarily a hard use knife but i used it to make the opening um but i have seen these knives in lots of torture tests and even though this knife is very thin bladed and has good geometry for the most part this is still an edc knife but it can't take one heck of a beating but this is not necessarily what we're talking about let's keep going so Hinder XM24, and trust me, we have a lot more different budgets. I know this is a very expensive knife, but you can't deny this thing being not being a hard-use knife. And let me be clear right now. A real hard-use knife is something like this. Why is this a real hard-use knife? Because it is a full piece of steel. This blade goes all the way down through the handle, out the butt. It's one piece of steel. The only thing you have to worry about breaking is the blade itself. There's no mechanical parts, nothing that moves. This is a real hard use knife. But if we are talking about hard use folders, what are they good for? Well, they're good for cutting. Hard, harder use cutting, which that's where I'm a little bit con um like I don't know. I'm I'm a little conflicted, I guess you could say, because I believe a knife is made for cutting. Now there are going to be times when you're going to deal with harder use cutting, light duty prying, some scraping, maybe pulling things out, wedging it in between things and prying things over. And I understand that for a hard use knife. I've done it a million times. But you do need a knife that's capable of doing that. And that's where this kind of fits in. You know, maybe some little light duty chopping. Um, but it definitely has the geometry, the build, the strength for something like that. Now, what did they do wrong here? Um, I think they could have like left the spine the same thickness and maybe thinned it out right here and gave you just a little bit of a taper. It'd been nice to have a hollow grind, um, or just a little bit deeper of a taper. I don't think it would have really taken much strength away they could have left the same thickness behind the edge but maybe let it go up higher at that thickness because when you're talking about hard use knives you're talking about chipping the edge and doing damage to the edge and then you have to remove steel when you remove steel if it gets thicker then it's just going to get that much thicker every time you sharpen it so i think that could have been done a little bit better but either way this is a badass knife let's get to the next one and we have a few on the list. I'll try to get through them pretty quick. The Manix 2 XL. This to me is an amazing hard use knife because it slices very good with its very tall flat ground blade. Cuts really good. I have no complaints about this geometry. It just works really good. You can get up nice and close to the blade. The one thing I think they did wrong with this was using a plastic cage. If you haven't seen the videos, there's videos of them hanging things off the spine of this knife and the cage breaks or under not that much pressure. So I feel like in order for this to be an absolute hard use knife and really take a beating, you need to replace that cage to a titanium cage. Now, if you're not really wanting to hard use your knife and you're just doing basic cutting, no problems. Next, you have the Yojumbo. This is a fighting knife. This isn't really a hard use knife, so it really shouldn't even be in this category. Um, it has a very deep hollow grind that I think really makes it a great cutter. I wouldn't call this much of a hard use knife. I'd call this more of a hard use cutter because one drop on the ground, this tip will break. It is a very, very pointy, thin tip, and that is going to be the big, like, 
failure on this. It's not a failure. I'm, I'm not saying they failed. I love the way it is. I wouldn't change it. I'm just saying that that's going to be the one danger that this has is this tip will snap very easily, but it is a very good slicer and a very tough knife. Next, the Cancept Helix. Now, this thing, I haven't done a review on it, so I'm not going to speak about it too much, but man, this is a badass knife. It is very, it is a big knife, nine, I think it's a little over nine inches, either way, nine inches or plus. It has a Tonto blade, so you will be able to do a little bit of light prying, and it is pretty, not, not crazy thick behind the edge, it actually has a pretty good taper. Uh, the blade does match the, the profile, so big knife. So, you know, it deserves to be a little bit harder use. Now, I do love seeing when they're a little bit thinner behind the edge. So, I can't really speak about this too much because I haven't done my testing, but I figured I'd throw it in this video anyways because to me, this is still a hard use knife. Next up, we'll go with another knife that was made by Kansa. Now, this is a prototype. Now, this is the Alien DX2. These just dropped. Now, can't Concept this is the one that actually OEM this or produced this. And, yeah, you're talking about basically the same thing as the Helix, except for they he made, or Alien made this really thin behind the edge. This is an ultimate slicer. So this thing is going to be not a hard use knife in the sense of uh, like what the X724 is, but a hard use knife in the sense of you got a big tall blade that can just blast through things in the slicing categories. I think they got a lot of right here. Um, I do like um, what he did here and the only thing I could say is that it is it is a big knife and, um, you know, maybe a little bit too big for some people um, that uh, could possibly get the same type of grind in a little bit of a smaller package that are just wanting cutting performance. But no complaints by me. I, I really like this knife. Um, very badass. Um, let's get to the next one now. Let's just go with the Shaman next. Okay, we have the Spyderco Shaman. Now, this thing, it, it, it's kind of that mid-range because it is a hard-use knife. This has a hard-use grind. Um, the Ergos really fit your hand. They feel really good in the hand. And it doesn't cut half bad because of the tall grind. Now, I would argue that maybe it's a little too thick um, behind the edge. And I say that because this is not a um, a knife you're going to baton with. This is not a knife you're going to pry with. I mean, it just doesn't have the type of blade for prying. I don't know where you'd pry with it at. I mean, what are you going to pry with the tip? I mean, it just doesn't make sense, you know, because when you try to pry with a tip like that, it will snap. You want, you want a certain type of blade shape for that type of work. So it just doesn't make sense. This, this is a type of tip for utility purposes. So I just feel like that they could have thinned this out just a little bit and made it a little bit better cutter and a little bit less hard use. Love this knife. And, um, yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, I love it the way it is. I'm just saying, you know, like little things that I would love to see. Recon 1, the Cold Steel Recon 1. Now, this thing is a beast. It has a very tall, flat ground blade. I recently just put a new edge on it, and it took a heck of an edge. Very, very sharp. And this knife makes sense to me. It has a very... um big buoy blade a clip point buoy blade that matches the strength of the lock it cuts really good and because you have so much ergos here the fact that it is a little thick behind the edge it has a tall grind the spine is not crazy crazy thick so it passes through materials actually pretty easy considering you have the ergos you have when you have this much leverage behind your cut then it helps bring this blade to the performance that it's supposed to. Now, if it uh, had a rinky dinky handle, maybe not. Or if it was even thicker in the spine, maybe not. But the way they did it, they did it very well here. And this thing just works. And you can get up nice and close to that blade for the real you know, strong push cut you're gonna use with this. Great job, Cold Steel. Cold Steel, Recon 1. Now this one, 
the Wii Knife 620, I would argue that this is a hit and a miss all in one. So, if you're coming at it as from a hard use place, then they did a good job. The grind is, is great. It cuts pretty good. You can get them nice and close to the blade. The ergos are fantastic and the action is incredible. If you're coming at it from an EDC carry, um, you know, just a regular EDC knife, then no, I would argue that this blade should be thinned out up here. Behind the edge thickness isn't so bad. It's just they could have you know the spine is a little thick for this and they could have made it if not a hollow at least just um a slower taper right here from this fuller because that would make this cut a lot better and make it a little less hard use and a little more better cutting so just depending on what you're getting it for um i think it's still an incredible knife and it will work for both purposes it's just you know usually when you're grabbing a knife to to carry because you know you're going to be cutting some stuff then you usually want something that cuts or gets the best performance out of it and for hard use this thing is pretty good but it kind of sits in that happy medium spot where it almost doesn't know its place is it an edc knife is it a hard use knife um i mean the lockup would say it's hard use i mean the the, the stop pin is this big back spacer locks up rock solid very good um but I don't know. Um, I do like it though. I'll say that much. And just for basic EDC, it'll work just fine. But do you really need this hard or, you know, this for just basic EDC, do you need a thick blade like that? Um, and it's not that it's crazy thick. I mean, I'm not arguing that it's a, just a beast of a knife. I'm just saying that, you know, it kind of sits in a place where it's like, where do I go? Where do I go? All right, guys, let's get to the next one. <laughs> Here is a knife that is very, very well done. Now, this is a cold steel code four, and this one has the clip point. It has a deep, nice hollow grind, beautiful hollow grind. It does have the triad lock, and the triad lock is a very strong locking mechanism, arguably the strongest. Um, but it's still an EDC size knife and can be carried very easily, but it has very... A very strong build and build quality now what i think they got right here is that they put the right blade for the handle this isn't a thick handle it's but it's still very hard use but yet they gave you a good grind for cutting i think they did a lot of right here i i can't even complain about anything on this knife when it comes to the way they did it i think they did this perfectly well and they executed it great The Chris Reeve Knives Um Num Zon. I'm trying to get this video done because a lot of these knives I have to return tomorrow. So this knife is a Chris Reeves knife, Um Num Zon, S35 VN Titanium. And, you know, it is a hard use knife. Now, I think they did so much right here. So much right. Um, they have a great grind for the handle and for the size so i think this is a well executed hard use knife now some people argue that this knife is made for gloves and i've heard that from a lot of different people but i would argue against that because have you ever put on gloves and tried to use it i mean i don't think it, you know because the, the thumb studs are close to I mean, you have to pinch it, and then with gloves, you have so much play, it's not going to be a knife that's very comfortable to use with gloves. Now, if you open it up, then put your gloves on, then put it on, or then use it, then maybe. Or if you have some very tight gloves, then possibly. I just think it depends on your gloves, maybe. So maybe it is. Maybe it just depends on the gloves you're using, I guess. But this is still a very, very good knife. I would say that... Um, I am every time I, I take it out and I open it up, I like it more and more. This is an amazing knife, and they did a, a lot of great here. And it matches up with what it's supposed to be, and that's what I like about it. Thumb studs are a little slick. That's another problem with gloves. I think these thumb studs would be very hard to use with gloves, but you know, what do I know? The SOCOM Elite. Here's another one that I think is done very well for its build. It's a big knife. This is what I would. This is what I think of when I think of tactical. This is a tactical knife, aside from, you know, the Bob Terzola actual knives. But 
Everything is done very well on this. So one thing I think they could have did a little bit better is that the grind is more like an ax than a knife. And regardless of how hard use you think it is, it's still a knife. And it does cut. So let me just say that right now. It does cut. But I just feel like, same thing like I said with the Hinder XM24, they could have made this taper a little bit different right here. Less axe-like and more knife-like. I think it would have just benefited a little bit in that sense but other than that it still cuts good and it's a great knife and you can get some light duty prying done with it some scraping with it and it does work great for that stuff next up the harsey folder um these are expensive knives right here and you know just like the the hinder but um it does have a very thick hard use grind with great ergos and it is a big knife now the one thing i would argue about this um, aside from the grind let's take the grind out of it i don't want to keep saying that i just wish they would have put a sharpening troil in there because with a sharpening troil it would have made sense for repeat cuts because a hard use knife is going to have edge chipping um, no matter what you, how you look at it, if it's a hard use knife, it's going to have edge chipping. So you're going to have repeat sharpening. And if you keep sharpening this, this part right here is going to be hanging down while the edge is going up the blade. It would just be nice to see a nice sharpening toil in there and they could have done it. Um, and then if you do it yourself, it starts making the knife not look authentic and you know, it'd just be nice if they just did it right off the bat. But I will say this knife is getting super smooth great knife by the way love this knife hinder xm24 3.5 inch now this is a great example of a just a good edc hard use knife yes i would love to see it with a hollow grind i would love to see the taper a little different just like the xm24 remember this is the little brother to the xm24 so I, i'd argue the same thing here but the ergos are fantastic the build is all set up for good hard use so they did so many things right here um the one thing i would argue is you know about that taper now it does still cut good and you can always lay the edge back but they did do a lot of good here next up another one that um a lot of me you know what let me just say thank you to mr amazing because a lot of these knives i did get from mr amazing if not all of them and i appreciate and then also this these knives belong to timbo floydian and if i pull out anybody else's knives thank you for letting me check out your knives now this knife the react k2 what an amazing knife and this is I, in my opinion, another hard use knife, but this is a hard use knife done right, especially with the grind, because they give you the thicker tip because right here it's a flat grind, and that's going to give you a little bit of strength for the light duty prying or scraping, but it gives you a good grind thinness behind the edge and a great hollow grind for actual slicing and cutting. So you have the best of both worlds right there, and the ergos are just amazing. This knife is fantastic, and they did a heck of a job with the build on the Riet K2. And the action is just so good. Now the next one isn't necessarily a hard use knife, but it's a big knife all, you know, either way. This is the TS-162 from Tucson, the Predator. And in my opinion, this is an ultimate slicer. Very thin blade stock, very thin blade. They did so much right here. You have so much life to this sharpening, perfect sharpening choil. The plunge grind is way out of the way. The action is just amazing. Uncaptured uh, ceramic bearings on a racetrack. The ergos are just amazing. Like I said, I know this isn't a hard use knife, but this is definitely a hard use cutter. You can get repeat cuts done so fast. And this S90V definitely took a very, very sharp edge. Great, great. I would call this a hard use slicer. Kind of like the DX2. Couple more knives. We have the Ultimate Hunter by Cold Steel. Now, this is one that I think they did 
pretty much everything right. They have an extremely strong lock, extremely good ergos. The grind is great for what it is meant to be. It's meant to be a hard use outdoors knife. So I think they did an incredible job with this. You could definitely get a lot of outdoors hard use work done with this. Great job, Cold Steel. Another one that uh, I would I would argue is a little less hard use, but you have the American Lawman uh, by Cold Steel that is also really good. I, I like the grind on it for, for what it's worth. It is a little bit of a hard use knife without being extremely hard use. The ergos are okay. It is a little boxy, but it makes sense when you start cutting with it. With me, when I'm pinching right here, this back end just pushes right up into my hand, nice and securely for cuts. And they just did a great job with it. So not too many complaints with this and if you ever want to see any reviews of my good and bad on these knives it, the my good and bad is not necessarily for this video because all the complaints i have about the knives are in the reviews this is more or less just what they did right when it comes to it being a hard use knife now this one could arguably be considered a hard use knife but you know they just they have so much right here i think that they should have just knocked this down a bit, made it a hollow grind, or kept it a hollow grind, and made it just a, a tough EDC knife. I, I mean, I know the lock is incredibly strong when it comes to the lock up. You know, I know people have a lot of problems with Omega Springs, including myself, but the Ergos are just so good, and it is a great EDC blade shape. It's a good EDC size, and my camera will not focus. But... The grind could have been thinner. It doesn't need to be this thick. This knife is just not. The blade is a little thick for its purpose, in my opinion. And I think people would benefit a little bit more from this from being just a better cutter than it already is. But great knife. I love the knife. Last but not least, the Sabenza 21. And it took me really to own this and use it and sharpen it and you know really get you experience it to really understand how much they got right with this knife between the grind the blade thickness the the ergos just there's so much right here between the blade and the handle between the ergos and the grind the choil you know just how much this thing is built to use over and over and over and sharpen over and over and over because of this deep hollow grind it lets you continue to sharpen it without getting thicker they give you a great sharpening choil so that you know you won't even notice as you're sharpening up the blade the ergos are very neutral for it to fit pretty much anybody's hand um, the one thing that I don't like is the thumb studs and how pokey they are, but they got so much right here. It just makes sense. And it really took me a while to really appreciate everything they did right here. I don't think I even understood it the first time I checked out a Sabenza 21. But now after really using and testing and sharpening and really experiencing it, it just makes so much sense. Everything about it makes sense for a knife to just be used long term and to continue to work from the lock strength, the build strength, the ease of maintenance and how easy it is to maintain and keep it going all the way down to even the blade steel on it. I mean, just everything makes sense with this knife and they just did so much right here and um, I'm very thankful to Mr. Amazing for this knife. Thank you, bud. I, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for us and our channel. And I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.